Now, I'm hoping we now have Anna Sawa, Scottish Labour leader, MSP for Glasgow, joining us down the line from Scotland. Um, Anna, Mr Saha, lovely to speak to you. Um, first of all, I know that Labour's announcing the Green Prosperity Plan in Scotland this week. I'm confused about this because obviously we've seen Shadow Chancellor Rachel Reeves sort of suggest that this £28 billion that had been set aside per year for this project had been watered down. So what's the deal? You've got a green prosperity plan without the planned funding. Well, I'm, I'm happy to give you clarification and reassure you, Camilla, so you, we take your confusion away. We are really clear uh, that we have a climate emergency, but also a cost of living crisis. And Labour is going to take the strategic decisions to actually realise and maximise the green revolution. If that it's partly around uh, establishing the Great British Energy Company that's going to make those strategic investments across not just the northeast where we have a significant oil and gas sector, but also in communities across the country so communities uh, can benefit from the green revolution. But it's going to be backed up by a UK Treasury that's there to help make those strategic investments. So what we're not talking about is uh, getting rid of the Green Prosperity Plan. What we're doing is being sensible with the economy, recognising the economic situation we currently have, yes. one that we're likely to inherit and make sure we have a plan that's deliverable. And our plan is going to be driven by four objectives. The first one is uh, more jobs, second, lower bills, third, greater energy security, and fourth, okay. climate leadership. There is going to be a global leader on this. We want that global leader to be Scotland All right. in the UK. We we're struggling slightly with the line here, but hopefully you can hear me. Now, I'm also confused, and maybe it's just a morning of confusion for Camilla here, but Starmer has on one hand said that he doesn't want any more drilling in the North Sea, and yet he said that he won't stop Rosebank, which is new drilling in the North Sea. So which is it? Does he want new drilling or doesn't he want new drilling? So he, we haven't said that, that we're going to turn off the tap. We've said the opposite. And I think it's really important that we give that reassurance and clarification. There will be no turning off of the tap. There will be no cliff edge. Oil and gas will play a significant role in our energy sector for decades to come. We're talking about how we work in partnership to deliver those strategic investments to give confidence to the industry to invest and for us mm -hmm. to make sure we're maximising the green emission. But as part of that reassurance, we're really clear, we are going to uh, respect all existing licences. We will respect uh, and honour all new licences that may be granted between now and the next general election, because yeah. it's important that those businesses have the clarity in making those investment decisions over the, the shorter term, but yeah. also because we don't want to open up the government to any kind of claims for compensation. But, but, so we're, so I, I don't see any contradiction in that at all. Well, Keir Starmer has said that you're not going to give any new licences, and now you're indicating that you are. So that's a contradiction. No, it's not, because we are going to honour existing licences. We're going to honour any new licences that are issued between now and the next general election. And But we are not in a place of looking at new licences beyond the next general election. That's a perfectly consistent and reasonable position right. to take. So you're going to give but new licences until what, 2024 what the, and then no new ones. There's a contradiction so, as well, Mr Sawa, sorry, in your suggestion about jobs, sorry, just on this jobs suggestion, because the unions, which we know back the Labour Party, have warned that these plans to not issue new licences after 2024 are going to cost 45,000 jobs. Well, I think what the uh, unions are rightly concerned about and what industry is rightly be concerned about is to say that we've had all these promises before over the last day decade, but those promises haven't come to fruition. And, I, and that's what I think is really important to emphasise, Camilla. We aren't in government. We aren't making those decisions over the last decade. We aren't making those decisions over the next year. But I hope after the next general election, we are making those decisions. And what we want to indicate is when we are making those decisions, we will not just have the rhetoric and talk a good game of maximising the Green Revolution, we'll actually deliver it in practice, yes. working in partnership with because government can't do this alone. We need the industry to work with us to deliver those strategic investments and maximise. Yeah. Mr Sawa, we are struggling, unfortunately, with the line. I was going to ask you for your reaction to Nicola Sturgeon's arrest. You can still hear me, but we are struggling a little bit. Quick reaction to Nicola Sturgeon? Well, look, you've got a party now in meltdown and we've got a dysfunctional and incompetent SNP government and that's why people, yes, want change across the UK, but they also want change here in Scotland and Scottish Labour is now the only change on offer. All right. Thank you very much indeed for joining me this morning, Mr Sawa.